In this video, we're going to take a look at the use context hook in React. We're going to start out by talking about what problem it solves, and then we're going to see how to actually use it in our code. So what exactly is the problem that use context can solve? Well, often when you have a tree of components, a child component, several levels down in the tree, might find that it needs access to some data further up in the tree. So in this hypothetical example, let's say that in app.js, which is the parent component, we had a property name with a value of Bob. And three levels down, in the child3 component, we wanted access to that name property. Well, what we'd normally do is we'd pass it down as a prop from app.js to child1 to child2 and then to child3. And there are a couple reasons why that might be less than ideal. For one thing, child1 and child2 here are just intermediate elements. They're not actually using that name prop, so all they're doing is forwarding it on to the next child component, just so it can finally arrive at child3. And for one thing, this is adding to the code in child1 and child2, cluttering it up and perhaps making it more difficult to find the actual necessary parts of child1 and child2. And then we're creating the situation where, in child3, if we want to trace back the root of that prop, we have to go on a bit of a hunt going up to child2, going up to child1, and then finally arriving back at app.js to see where that prop originated. So what use context is going to do is it's going to create kind of a store for us in which we can just grab the data that we need no matter which component we're in. Now, according to the React documentation, under the section when to use context, they say that context is designed to share data that can be considered global for a tree of React components. So a good case for using context would be anytime we have some data that we want to consider global, some data that we think we might want to grab from any component in our app. And they give some examples here, such as the current authenticated user, the UI theme, or the language preference of the user. Now, we're almost ready to start looking at the code for use context, but before we do that, let's just take a quick moment and talk about two key ideas that are necessary to understand for using context. And those are the ideas of the provider and the consumer. And it's pretty simple. The provider is going to be a component that the subcomponents or consumers are going to subscribe to because it's the provider that holds the value that the consumer or subscribers want access to. So we're going to make a provider component, give it a value attribute assigned to whatever value we want the consumers to have access to, and then we're going to wrap those consumers or child components in the provider component. So with that being said, let's get into the code. All right, so here we are in app.js and VS Code, and we're going to demonstrate use context with a very simple example. We're going to have our parent app.js component, and then we're going to have two subcomponents. We're going to have a child1 component and a child2 component. So let's go ahead and create those. Come into our source folder, and we'll make child1.jsx, and then we'll go ahead and we'll make child2.jsx. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to split the screen into three columns so we can see everything at once. So we'll put child2 over here in the third column and child1 in the second column in the middle. So in app.js, let's set up as a default prop a name property. And I'll just assign it to my name, Greg. So we'll say app.default props equals an object with name Greg. So now that prop will be available on our app component, and we can bring it in here as name. And in child1 and child2, we're going to set up some simple stateless functional components because we're going to have the hierarchy be app.js with child1 as a subcomponent and then child2 as a subcomponent of child1. And what we want to do is we want to show how child2 can get access to this name prop without having to pass it down through child1. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and make these stateless functional components. So I've gone ahead and I've quickly set up these stateless functional components in child1 and child2. And what I want to do is I want to import child1 into app.js. And then I want to bring the component in here in this div should be child1. And then in child1, I want to import child2. And again, I want to use child2 within this div here. 
And yes, I know this is a contrived example, but still it's going to show how we can use use context. And it looks like I forgot my dot slash here in front of child two. So I'll just go ahead and put that in. So now we've got this name prop here and we're bringing it into this component. So of course we should be able to use it. Let's make a simple H1 and see that name prop output it in the browser. And there we go. We see the name Greg. Yes, I. So let's flip back to VS Code. Now our goal is to have access to this name prop in child two. And normally we would pass this down as a prop and go through child one into child two. But for this example, we don't want to do that. We want to use use context. So this is how we do it. The first thing we need to do is we need to bring in create context from React. So let's bring it in here. And what we're going to do with create context is when we invoke create context, it's going to give us an object, which is going to have that provider that we want. So let's come down here and let's invoke create context. And let's save that to a variable. We'll create a const and let's call it name context. So now we've created a context object and we've saved it to our name context variable. So that's the first step. What we have to do now is we have to set it up as a component to wrap our subcomponents or our subscribers. So I'm going to get rid of this H1 here and I'm going to set up my context object like this. Name context dot provider. And this is a component. So we're going to wrap our child one component in that. In this provider component, we need to give a value attribute. So we're going to write value and we're going to assign that to the name prop. So now this provider is basically like a store which contains this value, this name value. And anything below it in the component tree will be able to have access to that value. So even though here we're just seeing child one wrapped in this provider, child one imports child two. So basically both child one and child two are subcomponents of this name context provider component. Now there's one other thing that we have to remember to do, and that is we have to actually export our const name context or our name context object, because we're going to import that name context object into any of the subcomponents that are going to make use of it. So essentially what we've done so far is we've set up our provider and we've defined the value that that provider is going to hold. So now let's see how we go about consuming that provider. So child two is a component that we want to give access to this name value. So here's what we do. The first thing we have to do, remember we exported that name context object. Well, we're going to import that into child two because child two wants to have access to it. And we have to bring that in as a named export. So we're going to put it in curly braces, import name context from app. And now here's where we make use of the actual hook, the use context hook. We're going to import react and then in curly braces, we're going to bring in use context. Now within our function, we're going to call use context that hook and pass it the context object that we want to make use of, which in this case is name context. And that's going to return to us the value that we passed in here. So let's save this into a variable or a const, which we'll call const name. And that should be all that we need to do to have access to this name value. So let's come into child two here and let's verify that it works. Let's make an H1 and let's say name. And then we'll say from child two, just to make sure that we're actually calling name from child two. Let's save and flip back to the browser. And there we go, Greg from child two. So what you can see is that we've gained access to this name value, even though we didn't pass it down as a prop through child one. Child one here has no reference to that name value coming from app, and we've avoided cluttering up child one with some unnecessary props that it doesn't really need anyway. And you can see now that no matter which component we're in, as long as it's wrapped by this provider, we can now have direct access to the value from the provider. The other thing I'll mention is that whenever this value is changed, that will trigger a re-render. So right now we have this as a default prop, but let's say that this was actually part of the state. And at some point that state changed and the name was updated in some way. Well, child two here will be re-rendered with the updated name. So thanks for checking out this video on use context. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel so I can bring you more videos just like this. See you next time.